Hello everybody and welcome to the Hackintosh part 3. So if you haven't seen part 1 or 2, I'm going to leave annotations up there and links in the description down below. But basically part 1 was just an overview of all the components that were going to make up the Hackintosh. Part 2 was the build process, turning the parts into a functioning computer. And um, this is part 3, the OS X install. So I'm going to do like a step-by-step -step process of, of how easy it was really to get OS X running on this machine. Um, with tools like MultiBeast and UniBeast, it is so, so easy these days to get OS X running on non-Apple hardware. Um, so, yeah, you'll see how easy it was now, but I was just so, so surprised. A couple of things I have changed since part two. Um, firstly, I've got myself an SSD. Um, it's an MSATA SSD, so uh, no wires, no clutter in the, in, inside the case. Um, the MSATA port on this motherboard is only running at 3 gigabit per second, so SATA 2 speeds, but it's not too bad, and you'll see in the benchmarks now, um, it's it's really surprisingly quick. And secondly, I've also installed uh, mini PCIe Wi-Fi cards, so um, I get native airport support in, in OS X, obviously it works out of the box in uh, Windows as well, and I, can, oh, I have hooked up a really, really nice little antenna, so um, I'm getting really, really good speeds now. And before we begin, um, I just want to say, if you have any comments, um, any questions regarding the Hackintosh, or just Hackintosh in general, um, be sure to leave a comment down in the description, because part 4 is going to be a massive rant video, Q&A video, um, basically just explaining my thoughts on Hackintosh and this Hackintosh in general. Um, so yeah, because I know this video, this series has been quite concise, I haven't been able to talk about stuff for as long as I maybe wanted to, but um, yeah, so if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below and um, I'll do my best to answer them in part 4. So what are you going to need to install OS X on your Hackintosh ready um, PC? Well firstly you're going to need one of these, um, this is a USB stick obviously, um, as long as it's 8 gig or larger then you're pretty much good to go, this is going to house the uh, OS X Yosemite installer and pretty much and the bootloader of course, and pretty much it's the magic key, without this you're not going anywhere, so uh, keep it safe. You're also going to need a computer that already has access to OS X, so you can either bor borrow a Mac off a friend, um, use an existing Hackintosh, or get um, OS X running in a virtual machine. Basically, the reason why this needs to be is you need to set the, the USB stick up ready, um, so it's compatible with OS X obviously, if you, don't, if you have a Windows PC then it's very difficult to do that. Um, and you also need to get access to the Mac App Store so you can download OS X Yosemite. Um, in my case, I'm going to use my 13-inch uh, late 2010 MacBook Air. Um, by whatever means, guys, I'm not I'm not going to say how you can do it, but there is multiple ways out there. So just uh, look around and you'll find a way. So before doing anything, obviously, download a copy of OS X Yosemite from the Mac App Store, um, the latest version of UniBeast from uh, TonyMacX86.com, and the latest version of MultiBeast. So we're ready then to plug our USB stick into our machine that is already running OS X, and uh, let's get our USB set up for our Hackintosh. So I want to click on the USB stick, click Partition and One Partition, uh, make sure it's set to Mac OS Extended Journals, um, and just name it whatever, I just named it USB. Um, and then make sure it's set to master boot record, that is extremely important, not GUID, um, which is what I instinctively thought originally. But once it's done that then, um, you'll want to open up UniBeast. And this is such an unbelievably simple process, but it did take one hell of a long time. I had to open up um, iStat menus to see if it was actually still like right into the disk. Um, it took me about 50-55 minutes to complete the whole process and it does look like it gets stuck for about half an hour but just bear with it guys. Um, it takes a while but it does get it done. Last thing to do on this side of the track then is to uh, copy MultiBeast onto the USB stick. This is just simply in case Wi-Fi doesn't work out of the box. So after doing that we're ready to get OS X Yosemite installed on our Hackintosh. So we're going to plug our USB stick in, turn the thing on, and then mash the F12 key because we, obviously we have to boot into the USB stick. Um, and then we'll be greeted by the Chimera bootloader. I just went mental with the boot flag as I wanted to play it safe. Dash X, dash V, dash F, graphics enabler no, MPCI equals 0x2000 and kext dev mode 1. Um, I could have tried it without any boot, uh, boot flags, but it probably would have kernel panic, so I just basically 
typed in all of them and um, well, as you can see it did um, it did work. So then I went about installing OS X Yosemite as I would on any Mac really, there was nothing nothing different about it whatsoever. But um, after it completed, obviously reboot, we need to leave the USB stick in though because there's no bootloader installed onto the actual SSD yet. Um, so there we go, boot back into the, into the USB stick. And I tried without any boot flags here, I just went screw it, tried to boot into the SSD without any boot flags and um, unbelievably it worked. I was getting a couple of freezes though every now and then, so I used the um, the boot flag dash no dash zp. I don't know what it does, but um, it, it fixed my issue. Audio didn't work, so that was the only thing that didn't work, which is pretty pretty good going when you think about it. But um, so yeah, that is the only thing I have to install. This obviously installs our bootloader as well. As you can see there, I picked um, iMac 14.2 for the system profiler because it's a Haswell-based machine, and it's pretty much it's the closest real Mac to what this Hackintosh is. So unplug the USB stick and boot it on its own for the first time. I got a little timer going there to see um, how quick it is from power button to desktop basically. Um, this SSD is unbelievably quick even though it's running on SATA 3 gigabit per second and given the fact as well here it may not seem that quick but it starts loading OS 10 from the point where the bootloader counts down. It's got to go through a BIOS and a bootloader before it actually starts loading OS X. So there we go. 25 seconds from power button to desktop. That is not bad at all. Time for some benchmarks then. Um, for the CPU and the memory I used um, Geekbench 3. I've used Geekbench for absolutely years. And you can see there that single core performance is over double what I got on my Mac Pro which is just insane. And uh, multi-core performance is about 500 points to the good. So it's definitely a massive upgrade over the Mac Pro. And on the GPU side of things, um, I use Cinebench R15. Now, people have been saying the 660 is old and stuff. It is still a monster of a card, and the value for money is insane. Um, it just squeaked under 70 FPS, which is only about 4 FPS over what a, a current Gen 760 gets. To test the SSD, I use Blackmagic's disk speed test. And as you can see there, it pretty much maxes out that SATA 2 bus. Um, if I was running this at SAT 3 speeds, then I'd probably get, be getting about 500 meg um, read and write. But f honestly, for what I use this for, 250 is is perfectly adequate. Time for some gaming then, and this is where this machine really excels. This is FIFA 14, obviously not a very demanding game, but look at those temperatures, guys. I was really worried about the lack of ventilation that this um, case provides for the GPU, but 54 degrees Celsius, um, and those those frames, I mean, it never ever dropped below 60 FPS, and this is on Ultra at 1200p. Elder Scrolls Skyrim then, this is a masterpiece of a game, and um, yeah, this is about on a mixture of high and ultra at 1200p again, so a really, really high resolution, and it's quite a CPU intensive game, so you can see the CPU temps are, are, are well, much higher than what they were on FIFA, but again, the GPU temps, it, it, it comfortably plays it, and um, the temperatures look really good too. And here we go then, Far Cry 4, a, a brand spanking new game, next gen sort of grade stuff, um, and it is absolutely terribly optimised at the moment, but you can see there, it's definitely the game that pushes this system to its absolute limits. GPU temps are still comfortable though, and the same goes with CPU temps. The actual system can handle it really well, it's just the fact it's so unoptimised, um, frame rates tend to be all over the place. So there we go then, that is my system, uh, it's running OS X Yosemite beautifully and it's running Windows 8.1 just as well. Stay tuned guys for part 4 and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video guys and as always I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra.